Hello again, and in this video we're going to go back to basics. We're going to start looking at some of the simple concepts of photography and uh, specifically today we're going to look at aperture. Now, <laughs> aperture is a is a common thing in photography. Everybody talks about it. It, it, it leads to so many things, whether it's that's creative photography or, or just controlling light. And uh, what I want to do really today is just look at how we, we use aperture what it is and, uh, and what it can do to our, to our photographs. So the first thing about what, what is aperture? Well, aperture is, um, is actually a, it's a hole right in the middle of your lens that lets light into the center on the back of the camera. And, uh, oh, it's getting warm. Let me just undo my jacket a little bit. And um, when, you, uh, when you take a photograph, the light comes through that hole in your lens um, to hit the, uh, the center on the back. And depending on how light or how dark the scene is, you may be, a, you may be in, a, in a dark environment, you may be in a super bright sunny day like it is, like it is today, um, you'll need to change the size of that aperture so that you can get the right amount of light on the lens, on the uh, sensor to, to get the right exposure. Now, you'll see numbers on your lenses. Everything from f2.8, in some cases f1.8, in some cases lower right up to f32 and these f numbers they are the numbers that can that are effectively tell you how big that hole is so you can see here a small chart that shows um, the apertures that uh, that are commonly used in photography uh, you'll even see the symbol you recognize that symbol as people use that quite often related to photography items um, and what really what an aperture is as it, as it, as it works is it's a series of blades that actually sort of swizzle around each other to, to make a hole and at one end, we've got f2.8. Now that is the biggest hole you can get. And that is a, is a setting, on this chart anyway, that lets the most light in. You can get bigger than 2.8. You can actually get f, f1.8, as I said earlier. Um, and then as you start to close that aperture down, you can get to f8, f11, f, f14, right the way to f32 in some lenses. And that's a really, really small hole and does not let a lot of light through at all. And you know, in certain circumstances, you don't want a little light to hit, hit the sensor. You might be doing um, uh, a long shutter speed, or it might be a super, super bright day, a little bit like it is today again. Um, it is a very sunny day today, surprisingly. Now, at f2.8, what we're doing is we have got a big hole, and that big hole, as I said earlier, is going to let a lot of light through, but it's also going to have another effect on our image. It's going to give us a really shallow depth of field. So. If I pick up my camera here, and I've got um, quite, a, quite a, a wide lens uh, on this at the moment, and if I take a, a picture of f2.8, and I'm gonna take a picture of this rock just here. So I just turn around, and we've got to focus on that rock, which is there, and I'll take that picture. There we go. Now, let's look at that picture. So that, this picture was taken at f2.8, letting as much light through as possible. And as a consequence of that, you can see we've got a really, really fast shutter speed up in the thousandth of a second. Now, the building in the background, you can see is blurred. It's not in focus at all. And that's because f2.8 has given us a really shallow depth of field. If I take a photograph of the building, focus on the building this time, I'm just gonna move my focus point. I'm gonna move my focus point. Just at a funny angle here. There we go. Now I've taken a photograph of the building, you'll see that these rocks towards us are out of focus. Some photographers will want to achieve that by creating a sense of depth in their image. Maybe by enabling you to pick out a certain um, topic in the, in the photograph, like a flower for example. If you focus on the flower at f2.8, then the things in the background of that flower are going to be blurred. And therefore, if they're blurred, they're not going to um, detract from the image and the, your image is gonna focus people on that flower. However, in some cases, you will definitely want to have a nice um, focus range throughout the whole image where everything's nice and, and sharp. And for, for doing that, you need to change your aperture. And we need to make that number bigger, which makes the aperture smaller. So let's just take that same picture. Let's flick up a little bit and let's go to the other end of the scale. And I've now set my camera to f20. That's quite large. So let's take the same picture again. This time of the, of the hotel first. And if we look at that picture, we can see that the rocks in the foreground are actually much more crisp and sharp. 
not totally perfect, but they're a lot more in focus than they were a few moments ago. Let's take the picture again, this time focusing on this rock. So we're just going to find that rock, gonna focus on it, and there we go. Let's look at that picture. So once again, not totally perfect, but you can see, even F20, we've, en we've enabled ourselves to get that, that building in the background into focus. We could push it a bit further, we could push it up to F32 perhaps, um, which is, you know, an even smaller um, aperture, a lot less lighting. But as you do that, you start to increase your shutter speed or decrease your shutter speed, as, as the case may be, because if that shutter speed gets slower, you get the more risk of, uh, of camera blur. So you might need a tripod, for example. So you would use aperture always in conjunction with the other two settings, which we'll talk about in another video of shutter speed and ISO, just to balance off that exposure. Because at the end of the day, there is only one exposure for, there's only one perfect exposure for this, for this scene. And if you change, if you change that um, aperture, then you're gonna have to compensate that with other settings like shutter speed and like ISO. And typically, if your aperture gets smaller, you move towards the, the bigger apertures, then, you lend, then your shutter speed can get faster. Um, you would also really want to play with your aperture if you were working in a dark environment. So a, a concert, for example, or indoor photography. It's on, at night, you, you, to maintain the level of shutter speed, to get things sharp that maybe have a bit of movement in them, you're going to need to open up your aperture as wide as you can. They often call a lens a fast lens that's got, uh, that's got a wide setting. So this is a, uh, it's a Nikon uh, lens, it's a 74, sorry, a 24 to 70, but it's an f2.8, which they would call that a fast lens. Um, some lenses, mainly kit lenses, for example, maybe have an f5.6 lens, and that's as, as, as best as you can get. Um, so that's as, as, uh, as wide as that will go. And, and that's not going to enable you to take pictures in, in low light as, as much as a, a, a lens that goes right up to f2.8. So in a nutshell, that's, that's Aperture, that's how it works. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please uh, leave a comment below, hit the, hit the like button, and if you, uh, if you want to see more of our videos and be notified as to when we do another video, then there is a, a subscribe button just down there. Just give it a click and, uh, and you'll get a little notification whenever we, uh, whenever we publish something. So thank you very much for watching.